Hello, I'm Jean Carruthers. I'm clinical professor of ophthalmology at the University of British Columbia. I'm an oculoplastic surgeon and passionately interested in patient safety. I do appreciate the honor of receiving this excellent article for review. Aesthetic enhancement is only possible with safety. And Dr. Scheuer and co-authors have reviewed the world literature and then completed their own detailed facial vascular dissection which they have shared with us both in photographs, discussion, and an associated video. They make the point that we have to know the anatomy of the facial vasculature, but they also make the point that even with this knowledge, there's enough individual variation that even the most expert injector can get into problems. And it behooves all of us to have all the materials that we need, including hyaluronidase, in our armamentarium in the office, just in case. They describe six facial vascular danger zones, the glabella, the temple, the nose, the perioral area, the infraorbital region, and the nasolabial fold. I'll just give a brief tip from each region. In the glabella, the supraorbital and supratrochlear arteries initially are deep, and then they, about an inch above their foramina, they become more superficial. So use a low G prime filler while putting a finger on the supraorbital rim to prevent backflow into the orbit. The temple, the danger in the temple twofold, the superficial temporal artery and the middle temporal vein. The superficial temporal artery when injected has been shown to deliver uh, dye into both eyes. So it is very important to inject at least two centimeters above the superior border of the zygoma and posteriorly from the tail of the brow. The middle temporal vein drains into the jugular and is more likely to give um, pulmonary embolus rather than into the globe. In the infraorbital region, the infraorbital foramen is about an inch from the midline and 11 millimeters below the inferior orbital margin. Injecting laterally is way safer and then pushing the product medially towards the medial canthus. In the lips, the superior labial artery runs posterior to the mucosal muscle interface and several millimeters above the inferior border. So injections should be with a low G prime filler at the vermilion cutaneous border and no more than three millimeters deep. In the nasolabial fold, the facial artery is hidden under mimetic musculature for the lower two thirds of the fold, rising more su superficially uh, as it comes towards the ala in the upper third. The angular artery, uh, as it's then called after it gives off the uh, labial arteries, uh, is, uh, it communicates with the dorsal nasal artery, which is a direct branch of the ophthalmic and it is the second most common site to give blindness. On the nose, nasal injections, uh, it is such a vascular structure, and again, the dorsal nasal artery is a direct branch of the ophthalmic, communicating with all the other branches from the facial artery. I don't believe we should be injecting filler after rhinoplasty because of the changes in the vascular supply. And this area too is in the top three of creating blindness and number one in creating tissue necrosis with fillers. So in summary, know your anatomy. Uh, all the facial vasculature communicates except for the central retinal artery, which is an end artery, which is our problem with blindness. Use small syringes and gentle technique. Keep your needles and cannulas moving. And I believe it is very helpful to include epinephrine in your filler because of vascular constriction, which will enhance patient safety. Thank you for your attention.